Hello, this is Scott Eustis, Community Science Director at Healthy Golf. Um, reviewing some aerial photos of the East Grand Lake unit in the Chafalaya Basin. Um, did a little video on the 1998 photo, and it's kind of rambly. I'm experimenting with this. So <laughs> uh, we're going to look at some sonorous imagery of the area in the Bayou Sorrel oil field. Oh, shoot. Okay. If I can get that sharing to work correctly. Um, okay. Well, we'll see what this recording does. <laughs> but hopefully you can see um, where we are. Again, here's Bayou Sorrel Library. Bayou Sorrel Boat Launch is right above the Energy Transfer Partners Pipeline, Beasting, as Jody Mesh says. And generally, when we do tours, we take the boat through the Bayou Sorrel Cut. Uh, Nature Conservancy wants to put other cuts off of this sediment laden uh, Army Corps feature. And we're generally opposed to that. We don't want to add any more sedimentation into these swamps than is already happening. But let's talk about a different issue, and that's the health of these forests in the oil field. Oil field damages are extensive across the state of Louisiana in general. Here, it's more limited compared to the sedimentation problems of converting swamp to ash and hardwood forest to sycamores. Well, first willow trees, right? Willow trees, then ash, sycamores, and other hardwoods. But once you've converted to those, by the time you've converted to those forests, you've eliminated all water habitat. You've eliminated crawfishing as a commercial enterprise. But you've also eliminated fish and made it harder for fish eating birds. Um, anyways, another way to destroy the swamp is the traditional Louisiana way of dumping oil waste into the wetlands. Uh, it's much more of a problem in Jefferson and Plaquemines Parish. Here, we see it in the old photographs in 1998. Um, I've delimit delineated uh, some areas from a 2016 color infrared photo. And I'm going to click on those on the Google Earth. And you can look at how it compares to 1998. So it seems like we had less you know, we also had lost trees in 1998. So these salt scars might be very old, but they're definitely persistent. Once you put saltwater brine onto any land, you know, the Romans did this as an act of war against Carthage, right? It's salting the earth, nothing can grow. Um, we're not talking about ocean water, we're talking about brine which is much saltier. Um, it's just a killer and any thing that uses water, it'll kill a cell. Uh, it's just deadly, right? So, uh, um, you know, this is, this is why brine is used as a preservative for food, right? Because it kills living things that might, any bacteria or fungus that might colonize the meat will be killed by the by the salt. Um, <clears throat> so anything living in these areas has been dead. There's a newer one, and I'll label these one, two, and three, although there may be more. I guess I'm kind of prejudiced by the 2016 color infrared photo, and I think the 2006 RGB photo really pop out at my eye as being a certain color shape affiliated with particular structures and wells in the oil field. Um, so yeah, let's, we see that in 1998, these, these one, two and three, two and three are older. And then, you know, I guess I haven't, I guess we've seen maybe vegetation come back into this area by, uh, it's not there in 98, maybe it's there in 
2019, or at least I can't distinguish it. Um, what's interesting is that we do have the US Fish and Wildlife um, map. <clears throat> uh, this is the wetlands mapper, which is the federal aerial photo interpretation. And it looks, it assumes that these are scrub shrub, you know, everything is forest around here if it's not a spoil bank. And um, that's why you see PF, FO is forest. Um, SS is shrubs. So where the forest has been eliminated, all are these salt scars. SS stands for salt scar, I guess. Um, I guess officially it stands for scrub shrub. And you'll notice that uh, even though in the photograph underneath this polygon, there's no forest there anymore, in 1988, it's still listed as a forest. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, and we can get these polygons, you can get the record that, the, you know, this delineation was made by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service contractors or employees in 1988 from color infrared and it's 3.65 acres. So that is smaller than the acreage I have delineated using a similar technique because I, I was trained at Lafayette in these kind of photo delineation techniques. This one seems to have grown maybe or maybe it's a different interpretation based on water level in the photograph. You know, uh, this area, I've delineated it as smaller, uh, a smaller conversion of forest to scrub shrub or open water. Um, and let's, so, so 1988, this is their delineation. We looked at 1998, there's evidence there. And then um, let's see if I can't share. Now I'm sharing uh, a color infrared photograph from 2008. And this seems to be a very low water year because we're actually seeing gray color in the photograph. Um, again, um, National Wetlands Inventory indicated that all of this was scrub shrub. Um, I've just picked out areas that are obviously gray. You know, here, you know, where you could probably, that probably indicates bare soil, which on land, you can tell these salt scars a lot easier than in the wetlands because you don't have water obscuring it. So sometimes you have salt scars, like there might be salt scarring in this area, in this area between some of these polygons. <clears throat> like, why is there a little lake here? You know, is it related to the oil field? Maybe, but this is the photograph that really jumps out at me. Uh, the water is low enough to show these gray areas or bare soil areas. There's hardly any bare soil in Louisiana, even since the new marsh creation projects, it doesn't last very long. So it, that gray color really tells you that something is wrong, something is up. Um, so in 2008, color infrared, um, and this is just drawn using paint. So I don't have the acreages on here, but I did kind of use this photo to make my polygons from the 2009 photo. <clears throat> so again, one, two, and three. And I also have the, the wells associated. The wells associated with the, with the salt scar. And by associated, I just mean the wells closest to. These two salt scars are associated with the platform. So you could have, there's more likelihood for pipeline problems because you do pipeline the produced waste away from the site. Um, you know, there's just more interconnections, more junctions, more activity of unhooking and connecting pipes 
at the platform. So we could have had a spill that's not associated with a well, but it's more associated with a platform in, um, in these two salt scars. Um, but I went ahead and listed the wells. This one seems textbook associated with the well here. Well, the well, well, the, um, um, what's bad about the oil industry is that they use the 1927 geodatum. Like a, they assume the earth is shaped differently than everyone else in the modern world. Um, so it leads, to, so they'll report wells as, as having a location and it's not going to line up with your photographs that are using the 1983 or, or other datums. Um, 83 and 84 are very commonly used in most platforms. It's probably what's being used in Google, that kind of thing. But 1927, um, it's very outmoded. And you can see how, you know, take for example, this oil well canal. Obviously the oil well is in the keyhole. That's why this canal is there. So that a barge can float because the drill was on a barge that floated. So obviously this well is not in the forest. That's a wrong, and this well also is in the keyhole. This well right here should be in the keyhole. You can see how they're kind of all off by kind of the same amounts. So this marker here, this oil well, uh, you know, was likely here, close to the salt scar. So that one in particular, <clears throat> because it's at the end of this little keyhole, I mean, that one, I think it really is affiliated with the well. And forgive me, there's two wells. I forget which one is gas and which one is oil. One is the Shell Western E&P company, and the other is... Um, uh, brain, <laughs> body sorrel, oil field. Um, I believe green is gas and, and black is oil well. And it, it, apparently these are, I think this is a symbol for active too. So these might still be active today. Um, so, well, I need to look all that up. But basically there's two companies, two wells that on the map, they're here, but in reality, if you go there, as we have, you could see the well, it's at the end of the canal. Like, of course it is, because that's why the canal is there. Um, so you look past these artifacts, you can kind of see the relationship between the wells and this salt scar. This is pretty typical, just a plume, right? It just looks like a irregular, but oval shape, right? Um, where some of these are really wacky looking and I, you know, could they have been related to plumes at one point? Like this one's really terminates very abruptly at this canal. So what happened there? You know, did the canal provide kind of an escape relief valve for the produced water perhaps? And maybe it's, maybe the source was the platform or a pipeline that spilled and it just so happened that once that material hit the canal, it was able to go deeper where the vegetation was already absent. And so it didn't get any further south than the canal. Or, you know, was this a release from the well, which I guess was a gas well, according to my interpretation of these colors. Uh, but the well that it was here, um, you know, did it flow north? It seems less likely, but it's not impossible, um, you know. But either way, um, there are records of what happened here. Generally, they tend to be private and company held. And of course, there's lots of spills in this oil field that are publicly reported as required. The older ones uh, publicly reported to the National Response Center, the US Coast Guard. Um, and, you know, uh, then LDEQ and the Louisiana Oil Spill Coordinator's Office. Um, 
This one, I can't find a record for it. You can see it's there in 2008, and we discussed it wasn't there in 2005 and the earlier photographs, neither was it there in 1988. So, uh, but it's not in any National Response Center record. Um, so that's a mystery. So this hasn't been reported yet as a loss of wetlands from oil damage. So I don't know what to do about that. Because <laughs> it seems very obviously related to these wells. Um, so we might have to make the report 15 years after the fact. I mean, it, sounds, it seems like it was hurricane related, I would imagine. Um, so uh, 15 years later, we have about 20 different uh, NERDA investigations still ongoing in the state of Louisiana. So for an oil spill damage not to have been investigated or initiated in 15 years is, is not I wouldn't say it's it, it's not unusual. I wouldn't say it's super common, but it it happens. Um, the Taylor oil spill, the most famous example. We don't have a NERDA investigation for that yet, and that's been ongoing since two thousand four, around this time. Okay, so so those are some of the photos and ancillary data from nineteen eighty eight. 1998, uh, 2005, I didn't show 2005, okay. Uh, this is 2008 and then 2019. So let's, let's look at 2019 and 2005, um, particularly for salt scar number one. And kind of go back to before Katrina. Oh, sorry, this is after Katrina. After Katrina, we still see shadows in the coloration. It still looks like intact things, where if I fast forward to now, we can see the dead trees, these sticks and branches, and the salt scar, and the lack of trees. You can see it in the shadow. You know, these shadows are skinny, little daggers, right? Whereas a shadow for a healthy tree has branches, looks bushy, for the dead tree, it's a dagger, right? So, so definitely this is 2019 winter photo. Um, I don't know what the source is because Google Earth's not great at that, but it's date, the date is 2019. Whereas if we hit the time and go back to uh, this is 2006, so it was a post, you know, a year after Katrina. The photo is not great, but you see this coloration difference. And we'll go zoom out, and you squint, and you can see that gray area even better. And then if we go to our other known shrub areas from that have existed previous to 1988. You know, we have that same coloration. So again, this is again saying that this is related, um, and it's directly adjacent to various oil infrastructures. Um, <coughs> yeah, they got me coughing. Um, where again, eleven two thousand five, at least the color doesn't seem to be there. This is 2005, November, USDA Farm Service imagery. I don't think the photo sets for the Katrina response go this far north. Um, yeah, so that's the 2005 imagery. And again, we've looked at the 2008 color imagery, but it's really this November 2006. Um, we can look at even later imagery in between. This is a high water in uh, 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 October 2010 and see that the high water, you know, uh, it covers that site. 
in case we were worried or wondering about, you know, the elevation of the plants. Yeah, the water is covering the elevation of the plants here. So if it was a salt scar, that's consistent. Uh, similar with this one here and this one here. Um, that in and of itself doesn't really tell you, you know, what is the oil field damage, but it, you know, it, it confirms your other observations. <clears throat> 2014, um, just another year to look at, you know, I was concerned about, well, no, 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 there you go. See all of this area that doesn't have that shadow that makes it look like cauliflower, right? If you know something doesn't have those tree shadows, doesn't have trees there, but you do see that it's more cauliflowery um well you know that area is kind of ambiguous in my mind and you know that again i'm i'm really basing these off of that 2008 photo um, where you could really see bare earth so um i think other delineators would do something different uh, it also you know depending i was at 2000 feet um at google earth doing this like about yay so it's a certain level of detail and of course it's fractal if you really dive in it gets worse and usually um i think this is kind of the scale that uh, usgs would have worked at so um Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's just it. I'm out of time to work on this. So I'm going to make what memos I can and pass it along to Basin Keeper. Uh, it's interesting that the salt scar is there. We tore it all the time, but there's no actual documentation of this in the spill record. And Moscow's never looked at this at all. So we might be the ones to have to bring this up. Um, so we'll be looking for more donations in order to do that. Because right now I'm on vacation. <laughs> all right. Love you all. Bye.